What are you doing? Are you are we still doing this whole Zelda thing and not doing the right stuff? We're doing VGM. You're not even wearing the right shirt. Actually, I don't care. I like this shirt. This is a nice shirt. Yeah, sexy redhead got it for me. Do you nerd? Welcome back, nerdlings. Tom and Lady Lacey of Do You Nerd Here Variety Channel of all the things that we love, you know, toys, video games, and stuff. Uh, speaking of, hey, it's Video Games Monthly time, and, and we're fairly on time. The monthly subscription service that sends retro games to your door, you get to pick the consoles and handhelds. Is that correct? That is very correct. And what do you do to avoid any duplicates? You update your list. Even though the service is a lot of fun, the, the surprise is fun, the, you know, the element of not knowing what you're going to get, and sometimes you're getting games that maybe you would have passed on shelves and everything anyway, unfortunately, they can't offer the service worldwide. So it's not international. But we did want to have a little fun. So what we're going to do is we are going to see what games are in this box, and we are going to toss it over to our brothers in the UK in the Retro Refresh and have them tell you about the games that we got and they get nothing what did you say about mega drive did you get your arm worked out so when for when you toss it that's, overseas that's a terrible joke i will kill you gravy tom slowly they expect that from me not you what what are you doing don't i'm coming tom <laughs> i've been with you too long <laughs> I guess they don't get that either, so uh, they only get to, uh... Okay, all right, so so what is this card? That you? is the card that tells you to update your list. We already told you that. And what does this card do? A one-up means we get one extra game. And I guess you're going to have to get some magnet sheets out because look at the little... Oh, no, wait, they're not stickers, they're, they're tattoos. tattoos. Which tattoo do you want? I want this one. Oh, I thought you would have gone with, with Bowser. You're a Bowser. Right. You're big and rough and tough and Rawr. Bowser. This will be fun. So this is uh, a Famicom game. No idea what that name is. Sure it is. It's Kick You in the Face Boy. <laughs> Kick You in the Face Boy. Also known mm -hmm. by uh, Fist of the North Star, I think. That's what it's making me think of. I like of. my title better. So we are going to toss this over to Mike, Retro Gamer Boy, and he's going to tell you guys all about it. And that's how you can play your Sega Mega Drive and Genesis online in 2023. What's this? A Famicom cart? What is it? Fist of the North Star. But this is a, a Sega Mega Drive and Genesis channel. But you know what? Fist of the North Star was actually on the Sega Mega Drive and the Genesis. But it never came over to the Genesis and Mega Drive as Fist of the North Star. It came over as Last Battle. And in fact, was a release title on the Genesis. It sported some pretty amazing graphics, especially as this was a game made in the late 80s. It had arcade quality sprites that were huge and filled the screen. The Japanese version had blood all over the place. And there's some awesome mechanics in there, like choosing multiple different paths to finish the game. But this game is hard, really hard. You can't just choose anywhere to go on your multi-choice map. Your power level has to be at a certain level in order to do it. And the thing that makes it really, really hard, no continues. You cannot continue in this game at all. So once you're dead, that's it, you're out. Now, audio-wise, the game was okay and no better than some of the other games that came out that first released on the Genesis. But like I said, visuals were hard to beat, especially back then. I'm a massive beat-em-up fan, and playing Last Battle on my Mega Drive and for you guys, the Genesis back in the day, was awesome. Arcade quality graphics on Sega's 16-bit console. It was absolutely brilliant. What? The Famicom game? I don't know. Buttons make you do stuff, and it had at least four colors. On the Sega channel. Our next game is from GameCube. It is 18 Wheeler. I always want to drive one of those things. Uh, <laughs> I've watched you play the arcade one, and I don't know if I'm trusting <laughs> We got it in a nice case. It's got the booklet. Nice. It's the actual GameCube case for it. 
aside from me telling you how much I want to drive one, <laughs> let's let Stav tell you all about this game. 18 wheeler on the PS2, right, let's talk about that. Wait a minute, I need a trucker hat or like a, a trucker-ish hat. There we go, that's a bit trucker-ish and it's a uh, Batman, which has completely nothing to do with this game, but hey, it's a bit more trucker vibes for you. Right, let's go. 18 wheeler on the PS2. I've never played it actually. Now I've seen this game a lot of times. I've always thought about picking it up because I don't know why, but I like the idea of like trucker games or even like bus games. There's something about the kind of benign activity of just driving around doing a job that I find kind of interesting. <laughs> Even down to the fact that sometimes when I used to play Grand Theft Auto, I used to like just driving around the streets and, and stopping at traffic lights and just being a, a proper driver until I got bored all of a sudden and just start running people over and just ramming everyone. But aside from that, there is something about these games, but let's find out a little bit more about 18 Wheeler. Let's, let's, let's check it out. Okay, so 18 Wheeler American Pro Trucker or known in Japan as 18 Wheeler. Now it says here, it's an arcade game developed by Sega and distributed by Sega. So that's a good sign that that's pretty cool. It was released in arcades on 2000 and it was followed up with a sequel, The King of Route 66. And that was released in arcades as well before for the port to the PlayStation 2. So the gameplay has you trying to make it to the finish line with a truck's cargo and you get a set amount of time, but you can ram into special vans and they'll add three seconds to the timer. So it's definitely an, more of an arcadey truck game as opposed to a simulation truck game. So I feel in some respects like this is the crazy taxi of, of truck games, the crazy taxi of 18 wheeler games. And reviews, mm, reviews were, between five out of 10 to maximum eight and a half out of 10. But I'd say on average, it was getting about six or seven out of 10 to me. But what I can say is 18 Wheeler actually looks like an awesome game. It looks like the crazy taxi of truck games. And maybe I should actually go out and buy it. You'll have to let me know, Tom. When you play it, let me know. Is 18 Wheeler worth getting? Because I think it looks pretty awesome. Next up is a Game Boy Advance game. Now, unfortunately, the button bashers did not want to be part of this. My mouse has got a little red hole. But we've got the next best thing for you. Chris, tell the Splash Gaming. <laughs> and I know the Trollster has got to be an absolute pro, know-it-all, an encyclopedic source for all things Yu-Gi-Oh! Reshef of Destruction. Take it away, Chris. Yu-Gi-Oh! was Chef of Destruction. That is the game that I got to check out here for Video Games Monthly with Tom. And frankly, I don't know a damn thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! I know it's an anime. I know it's a card game. But is it an anime based on the card game? Or is it a card game based on the anime? That's how much I know. Then this is a video game based on the anime. Or it's a video game based on the card game based on the anime. See what I mean? If you don't know what you're talking about, it makes no sense. So I did what all good journalistic you know, integral people do. I went on the internet and I looked it up. And on the internet right here, it's called Yu-Gi-Oh! Reshef of Destruction or Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Monsters 8 Great Evil God of Destruction. I'm not sure how that translation worked. So this is Yu-Gi-Oh! 8. So I found out after starting this game up, because I had to give it a go. After about 30 minutes, I'm like, I'm lost. It started off like a top-down Zelda game. So I thought, okay, it's a cool RPG, but I knew better. I knew it was a card game. But right into the cards, I don't know anything. There's numbers, there's letters, there's monsters. But hell, it's like handing somebody a deck of cards and saying, go play poker. They don't know what the hell they're doing. That's how I am. Never played a single Yu-Gi-Oh game in my life. So I basically went in here blind. So I did what everybody does. I went and watched some YouTube videos to kind of get an idea. And frankly, I thought it was underwhelming. And I also did what all good YouTubers do when they got to find reviews. They look at everybody else's. And this game got middle of the road, like fives and sixes. And they said mainly because it's just the same formula over and over and over and over and over. And you know what? I don't think that's such a bad thing. If people like the card game and it's the same formula, Okay, fine, like whatever. Smash Bros, same thing over and over, they add a few things. Pokemon, they add a few things. It's the same formula, so I get what they're doing. Uh, but for someone like me, it doesn't make any sense. I'm sure Video Games Monthly has a plethora, a laundry basket full of these cartridges because people either bought it because they loved Yu-Gi-Oh! or this game has just been sitting in a dumpster somewhere for a while. And that's kind of what I think's happened with this. Not a super valuable game, but obviously if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh! fan, it's cool to have it. But for, you know, just someone like me, it's one of those games where I'm like, dude, I don't know a damn thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! So, uh, it, it wasn't fun, I didn't enjoy it, and frankly, uh, I hope Tom plays it uh, way more than I do, because uh, I think he knows about as much about Yu-Gi-Oh! as I do, which is about zero. 
All right, well, because of that one up, there is one last game in here. And there is one more British brother of ours, Sega Head. So we got a GameCube game, mm. but uh, it's not even in a GameCube case. It's mm. in just a regular CD jewel case. That's not what I'm worried about. Ooh, it's a triple X game. Should be totes fun. Oh my gosh. It's BMX X X X. There's gonna be some nudie chicks in here, I bet. Isn't that what triple X means? <laughs> yes, because someone was thinking one day, you know what kind of game I want to play? I want to ride a bike around and I want to look at some BMX. Triple X. What does the X stand for? Xylophone, xylophone, xylophone. Well, that's the only word I know of that begins with X. It's got bikes, boobs, pimps, boobs, stunts, <laughs> boobs, bird poo, motherfucker. What the f happened to my ride? Itching sick at Chaya No s day s on it. I ain't blind. I want to know what we're going to be doing about it. And boobs. It even has highly intellectual speech. They say that hand that holds Vina controls world. Well, this hand holds Vina very tightly. It even has an appearance from the President of the United States. Who then tries to fly? and die. This game has everything you could possibly want in a PS2 or GameCube game or anything else it might have come out on. In fact, it even has unlockables. Wonderful unlockables. <laughs> yes, B B BMX XXX. It's it's one hell of a game. Well, there you have it, Nerdlings. <laughs> Pro reviews from members of the Retro Refresh. And now we know why the VGM does not go overseas. <laughs> <laughs> Links to all those channels will be in the description below. Please leave some comments about our guest reviewers. And again, even though uh, you know VGM can't ship internationally, it was fun to have the guys take part in this because uh, you know, we just all love video games and we love talking about video games. This is what we do on a daily basis anyway. So let's just let's throw it into a video for them. Why not? Check out VGM if you would like to yourself Self and listen to the lovely Lady Lacey who has uh, excellent <clears throat> taste in fashion. <laughs> Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Go check out all those other people that we talk to and those things, their stuff too. Go over to the Retro Refresh because hey, all those guys are there at the Retro Refresh. We've got some really cool merchandise over on the uh, T Public website. And if we like it, we nerd it. Um, I'm going to See if you Sega know exactly knows why they did that, right? what what he's talking about. So, if you'll notice the door hang. Uh huh. We all know why they wanted to put BMX and girls together. You want to see the jiggle? Okay, <laughs> bye, nerdling. See you later. What's she doing? I am future Tom. Oh oh. Ah, oh, nice. Let me just put the switch on top of the magnets. That's fine. <laughs> There's Britney Spears on the back, I'm pretty sure. Features <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears. <laughs> I'm guessing we're popping over to him and he's gonna go, TITS! Sega, you better say TITS! So, uh, Beaver he, tail. So you know how I like to put things with the games that take pictures? What, what am I gonna put with those? With that, just like... Boobies.